Good luck. All right. So. Oh, fun. Ah, <laughs> everybody's joining the latest trend, I suppose. Let's attack down the center. So, we're playing the weekly teaching ladder, I believe week 127. And the idea in this ladder is you get to play a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent. Um, and in such playing, uh, you, afterward you review the game with your opponent, see what both of you thought about it, and both of you emerge stronger for having done this exercise. I think it's an excellent idea. And it works pretty well in, in practice, too. Finding an opponent, getting your game lined up, understanding it's probably going to be on the weekend, but might be on Monday or Tuesday sometimes. Like, it generally works quite well. Um, and for players who don't play their games, um, the tournament organizer just might not invite them back for the next one. But it's uh, it's pretty flexible. I've missed quite a few games, but I've made some effort most of the time to try to get them played. So here, our opponent is attacking with the Rook and with the Silver. It's important to use the Rook. It's important to use... I'm sorry, the Rook and the Bishop. It's important to use the Rook. It's important to use the Bishop. There is a proverb which mentions use the Silver, I think, Lance, Knight, Pawn... I don't remember. But the proverb doesn't say just use the rook, just use the bishop. Alright, so this bishop is hanging. Um, which means if I push right now, they're, basic, they're either going to have to block the diagonal or exchange bishops. There's another proverb which says do not exchange bishops if... or do not push the center pawn in the bishop exchange opening. Um... But I think by doing this, if I force this bishop exchange, I get a free move. A free move to advance the silver from the back rank up one rank. Um, so I try to play this to see if I can... If they're going to block their own bishop, that slows their attack. If they're unwilling to block their bishop, well, they'll have to come up with something. They'd have to exchange, I guess. So that's the dilemma. Uh, so, we frequently hear that it's bad to lose a turn. It's bad to lose a move, or to waste a move, rather. There's no way to lose a move, but you can waste a move. You could also find a way that's inefficient to achieve the same position that costs an extra move. Alright, so here they block the bishop, so this avoids time loss at the expense of, well, now it's harder for the bishop to attack. But they don't give me a free move. If instead they had exchanged bishops and uh, my silver went up a rank, it would be as if I were the start player at that point. Um, so they're trying to attack this square and take it by force. Their king is in the middle of the shape. I'm trying to find a more secure shape for my own king. Um, I'm not totally sure how to defend against this. Hmm. I mean, perhaps one answer is that this opening is not the safest opening in the world to begin with. So... I want to discourage them from building a castle with the king buried in the corner behind the lance. Well, this usually seems to discourage that. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, so I can't stop their attack. Um, now, if I bring the bishop up, they push this. Uh, we should exchange. I don't profit. Hmm. All right. So I'm just going to, when in doubt, protect my king. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of doubt. It's fine. Um, 
but then I want to aim for the opposing king. I want to use all of my pieces, not just my bishop and rook. Um, but also this point is perpetually challenging to defend. Hmm. Yeah, this does accelerate an attack on the king. Um... I'm trying to avoid tactics which put my bishop in firing range of the silver. Because I'm just not sure how those would pan out. I guess, yeah, I say when in doubt, secure your king. But I don't see how to further secure my king. It's also not obvious, like, if I don't bring the bishop into firing range of the silver, how do they continue this attack? It's kind of bobbled up by this... Um, like, yeah, they could push pawn 5-5, five five, but it doesn't immediately realize a benefit. That loses a move. Or, I'm sorry, this, this silver moved up twice, and then moved up the third time, and then moved back once. So it's as if the silver had gone 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of 1, 2. So that's why I say it loses a move. It's not efficient to move the piece this way. Um, on the other hand, what do I do? You can talk about efficiency theory all day, but... Um, hmm. I want to attack the king. Alright, this pawn is difficult for this silver to take. I'm still waiting to see what shape they're going to build before deciding which pieces to move up here to try to attack it. Uh, yeah, there's many traditional proverbs about good ideas about shapes and strategies uh, and tactics. Like, a tactic proverb is, do not run from a fork. And the explanation, at least in my mind, for why you don't run from a fork is that um, a piece that attacks two pieces can only capture one at a time. So, by running away from a fork, you're guaranteeing that you're giving up a move for no gain. Um... All right, our opponent continues to threaten pawn 5-5. Five five. This is their key concept. Hmm. I could exchange bishops and then drop my bishop to attack. Um. Hmm. I'm threatening in some sense, like pawn 2-6 here. And we exchange there, drop here, take this. Actually, that's a free pawn, isn't it? No, it's not, because I'm sacrificing the pawn in the first place. Um, I could move the bishop up. There's room for a bishop drop here. Hmm. All right, so my rook was defended twice, now it's only defended once. If the silver moves up and tries to snag my pawn, maybe I'm cool with that. I haven't totally decided whether I'd give up the pawn or not. Um, but no, I think it's important that I not give them tons of places to drop a bishop while also I'm threatening to exchange bishops. I'm also trying to bluff them into blocking this diagonal, although it's not really a bluff if it works, is it? If there's a tactical point to the bluff, it's not really a bluff. 
So I've been preparing this bishop advance, knight advance, other stuff advancing. Actually, I can move my silver up now. I should. The silver increases in value as it moves up the board. Um, problem is, they'd have a bishop drop and be able to exchange a bishop for a rook. But maybe that's not a problem. Well, actually, yeah, it's not a problem at all because the bishop drop would lose the bishop. Um, all right, so unless I've missed some grave tactic, this looks sensible. Pushing this edge pawn and pushing this edge pawn I'm told not to do when my king is over here. But I guess for them it might not be a terrible loss of a move. It's just it's slow to attack on the edge when there's other things going on. But otherwise, like, it's a decent idea. But other things going on would be like building a castle, deciding, like, where the king's going to sit, where the generals are going to sit. If you just never build it, um, your king is always exposed. So yeah, they've been threatening pawn 5-5, five five, and I'm finally asking, you know, are you going to play this or not? <laughs> uh, I think they will play it. But this doesn't actually force anything. This is just continuing to nag with the question of if they're going to do that or not. The closer I, my silver gets to controlling the square, the more anxious they'll be to actually do this exchange. Um... But yeah, my silver increases in value. This pawn, I mean, it's a pawn. It, it does increase in value, but it's just a pawn. Uh. Hmm. Oh, right. My silver might actually threaten to take this and this and hit the bishop. Um, which right now isn't so menacing. But in some future world where I've blocked this diagonal and a bishop exchange is not possible, or maybe they've blocked it, then this silver weaving up the board becomes kind of a menace. I just have to make sure not to drop some stupid tactic on the center file that like, loses all my material. It wouldn't surprise me if something terrible happened on the center file if I show some inattention to what's going on. But yeah, this pawn has increased in value. One might say it's maxed out in value. Because uh, I've got three pieces covering this square. They might hmm, then consider, okay, while well, we're taking that. Yeah, they might drop the bishop here, where it's, a, well, if you drop it, now it decreases the value of the bishop to actually put it on the board. The threat is stronger than the execution when you're threatening 35 things at once, but placing it on the board limits what it could be. Right now, the bishop could drop on any empty square, but once you place it, that severely limits where it can go in the future. On the other hand, um, eventually it does benefit you to drop a piece on the board because, um, yeah, because eventually you will need the piece to conduct an attack. Uh -huh. So this is my opponent's thought. Um, if I dropped my bishop in return, they'd push this pawn. It's not pretty. Well, is it? Bishop, pawn, silver, rook, 
Uh, uh, no, let's not. Um, so I prepare to run my king. I also prepare this bishop drop. And now if they push the pawn, I could just take. But, okay. Point taken. Hmm. Yeah, pushing pieces around your king generally weakens it. And that seems to be what I'm doing at the moment. Hmm. Okay, so I take my gold out of harm's way so my rook can go around it. They're lining up an epic attack, but my plan is to drop a bishop and move the silver out to defend. If I have time for it. Maybe also bishop drop here. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh that's spicy. Um Hmm. I didn't think that worked. Hmm. If I push this pawn, rook over, pawn up, uh, pawn takes, bishop drop, looks fine, right? Well, they push the pawn again. I take here. Hmm. Yeah, and actually trying to take this. Welcome, Shogi Harbor Party at 11. Welcome one and all, we're doing the game part of this, and after we conclude we'll do um, a game review. We'll look at the game together, that is. So yeah, this has me nervous. <laughs> uh, we're going to do the thing that I've been plotting. I'm not certain about it, but the more sp time I spend thinking about it, like I just need to commit. It's not good for me to spend all day brooding over an idea. So the idea is I want to transition this castle and put the silver up so it can protect this edge. Um, 
my opponent hasn't decided on a castle shape yet. So I want something that can withstand whatever they're going to throw at me. But also I'm preparing gold up, rook over, pawn up, knight up, something. I don't know how to break this. It's kind of an indeterminate castle form. So, yeah, it, it's flexible. It has the advantage that, you know, someday it could be anything. But something that stays flexible forever um, just isn't... It doesn't put up resistance when I test it. That said, I'm... I'm riddled with indecision here about how to break this open. Like, yeah, I could push the pawn, bring the rook over, something, something. I just don't know how. Um, separately, I'm threatening to take this bishop and then drop the bishop here and promote and take all the things. So this kind of forces a response. Uh, yeah, one thing Shogi Harbor teaches us is it's important to have attacking, defending moves. So, this uh, does have some kind of an attack, but it's mostly a defending move. But they're mostly attacking. So maybe it's fine. All right, they play the move I'd hoped for. Yeah, if they push the pawn, I would just be able to take the pawn. So, um, so I've cut off this lane for their bishop. So they need another idea. The other idea is probably, unfortunately, to break this open. I don't have a perfect counter to that. So... Yeah, this this is just bald Mino, I suppose. Um, maybe I just leave this open. I don't know. I want to attack over here. I also kind of want to drop my bishop here and take this, but then they're going to bring up this gold. Well, they bring up the gold. Did I just miss that? Like, back here? Well, I can't. I don't know if... Oh, I can't navigate backward in the game history. But, like, four moves ago, I thought I couldn't drop the bishop here because the gold would move up to defend this, but then I could actually move over here and take the lance. Um, so now I might have that same idea. Um, but I might be able to do it. If... Yeah, I don't know what the opponent's going to do, but... Regardless, this bishop drop well, it traps the bishop now. They can move the rook over and then the gold over. So it's not no. Yeah, my idea fails for a different reason. Cool idea, but doesn't work. But yeah, with these locked in exactly this shape, if nothing moves, there's nowhere for me to drop the bishop yet. But as soon as something moves. Uh, there's possibilities. As soon as anything moves, really. Hmm. Oh, I've actually opened a line back here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird if somehow, like, this were hanging... And something over here we're hanging to. Alright, so they do the obvious attacking idea. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat. But... I remain curious. So if they push the center pawn, I don't know where we're at. We each have three pieces plus a pawn controlling the square. 
and so it's perfectly balanced. Um, if they do nothing, I take this bishop, this pawn takes, and now I have a place to drop my bishop. Like I was saying. Uh, I mean, this is a strong attacking move. It's just, it does nothing about my threat. Finally, a good bishop drop. So by one turn... Bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. I'm avoiding a severe attack on my king. They push this pawn, I take. They push this pawn, I take the knight. They take my pawn, I take the rook. By one turn, by one tempo, I'm avoiding a severe attack. Otherwise, my king would be in doo-doo. Um, so yay me. How do I manage to win tempo? Well, I guess it's because, um, yeah, I did push some pawns and that took some time and maybe I shouldn't have pushed this so aggressively. But my opponent had not committed to any one idea. They remained very flexible, but there's only so much you can do while your position is infinitely flexible. Um, if I take this pawn, I'm still threatening this. If I take this pawn, my horse is trapped. No, it's not. It can take here. No. Yeah, I'd lose my horse for a gold if it were to move up. But then my gold drop could take one of these pieces, but it's... No, that's... Yeah. The way to escape this position in one piece is this way. There we go. What does this do? If I take the pawn, then yeah, I'm giving a silver for... Well, okay. Yeah, this gains some space, and I'm just not sure that it protects everything that needs to be protected here. So this knight... Well, no. Actually, yeah, I think I'm ready for a confrontation. Silver up, rook over, takes. Looks pretty straightforward. So I'm threatening this knight twice. This pawn blocks the knight. My other pawn blocks or prevents the knight from safely moving here. Although my horse had that covered too. If they're threatening bishop drop to attack my bishop, well, there's just not a square where their bishop can attack mine with the without them also hanging their bishop. So yeah, this is twice attacked. This gold cannot Sanjibyo. defend this knight safely. Although the knight could gold could move up, but I could take it and I'd win a gold. Um Yeah, this Sanjibyo. Unfortunately, in time pressure, I think they just made a series of errors that um, are somewhat regrettable. Alright, so, yeah, they're threatening to promote the bishop back here. That does defend the knight. Um, hmm.
This protects against the bishop promotion idea. I forgot that this lance could move up, so that gives them a place to run to. Um, but still, this is probably the best I can manage here. So, yeah. The other threat I have in this position is to take my silver retreats. My silver takes the bishop, then takes the lance, and then takes the rook. That's my other threat. They're scheming how to trap my horse. But there's more valuable pieces in this position than the horse. Mm -hmm. My horse is trapped. I made some effort to avoid it, but there's only so much I could do. Oh, if I push this, it's interesting. No, my horse gets trapped. Um. All right, so they successfully ensnared my horse. I can live with that. So they've moved their entire castle away from the king in order to remove my horse. <laughs> but also I'm winning a piece back immediately. So yeah, I was more concerned about my king than about trying to save some piece of mine. I think it's impressive because from a chess background, you tend to count the pieces a lot. Um, in shogi, you just have to go for it when you think you have an idea and it looks halfway reasonable. Uh, this notion of playing timidly uh, doesn't quite pan out. Maybe the lance drop was too heavy. I was concerned, again, that they might drop a bishop and continue attacking. Um, hmm. Yeah, my lance drop was not in the right direction. I should have considered this side of the board, because that's where all the value is. <laughs> On the other hand, um, yeah, if they do defend the rook, I can take and then drop um, so yeah, dropping a bishop in your own camp is a really heavy drop. But yeah, I was so fixated on stopping this attack, this attack which started quite early, that maybe I missed something better. 
By maybe, I mean almost certainly. Um, all right, we'll take a promoted rook. Oh, there's a tactic here. I can take the knight and then drop the rook here. Or in the reverse order. I don't know which way's better. It might not matter. I could also take this. Or I could drop here first. If I drop here first, they can break the pin. I take the bishop. I'm sorry, the bishop can move up to break the pin. Um, interesting. Yeah, this aims at the bishop and aims at the king before they've decided on a castle shape. If the bishop tries to break the pin, uh, I can use my silver to take here, and then, well, I don't know. Maybe that's not right. It looks right. It looks decent. Perhaps I have better somehow. If the bishop breaks the pin, lance takes, gold takes, silver takes. Oh, yeah, that works. Never mind. That's what we spent the past minute figuring out, was this tactic. It seems I missed a detail, though. They could drop the lance that I just gave them. That's a relevant detail. Um, I survived this, sure. But I didn't have to allow this situation. Um... Hmm, I could take the lance and then take the gold. But I've given them a rook, no matter what I do. So yeah, I've given them the rook, which might be a really good attacking piece for them. If I had to do it again and I saw that I had a better move, or I would have tried to look for a better move. Um, even though here I've won a gold general in this exchange, and this lance is going to be hanging. Um, yeah, now they have two heavy pieces to attack me with. My heavy piece is still sitting back at home, enjoying the game. Um, so yeah, I could have... well, this is a good position. I just might have had a better position. Yeah, in this, a minute ago here, when I considered how to give up the rook, I wanted to put the lance on a square where it's easy to target. So I actually have a bishop drop that hits both pieces. Um, but yeah, I just didn't want the lance back here when I 
it could potentially become an easier target if I set things up right. Um, mm -hmm. Makes sense to not leave pieces hanging. Okay, I drop my bishop in a way that minimizes the number of ways I could hang the bishop. My pieces attempt to support each other, even though they can't directly do so. But my next threat is a knight drop here. But I'm a bit wary of giving the opponent a knight in this position. Um, also, advancing this knight might be a better use of time and material than dropping a knight. Since this knight can only go to this square, whereas this knight could go anywhere. So dropping this knight prematurely would be a loss of time in the long term. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I attack this lance. My silver and horse protect each other. And my horse is trying to protect my king, but... Oh, maybe I could have taken this instead. Anyway, I'm trying to minimize number of hanging pieces and maximize the number of things that this horse can defend against. But this might be provoking them to bring their gold and lance onto this point immediately. So this provocation might be a terrible idea. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we'll see if we can get them to move this forward to prevent me from winning this. Oh, I'm sorry, the gold can just move. Right! Oh, goodness. I am fully encouraging their attack. Oh man, this is not responsible. This is me wanting to attack and being a bit impatient about it. Yeah, if I just kept hitting the lance, it would have had to keep, it would have had to sacrifice itself. This makes some attempt at attacking, but it's slow. It would have made more sense to hit the lance, although maybe somehow they could defend it, and I don't know. But yeah, this gold move looks interesting. They had clicked the rook first. I'm starting to see where a rook factors into this analysis. Um, all right, I don't have anything better than trying to win the bishop here. Um, because I do get the bishop. I guess they could drop the rook. It's... Oh, what? I don't see a tactic here. I need to do this. Alright. This is what they envisioned. Uh, we'll take it. 
Hmm. Hmm. They're trying to win my rook. And they could win the rook if I give them the bishop, and then the bishop drops, and then the rook hangs for free. Arguably, taking both pawns and exchanging like that, rook takes bishop, and then if there's some fork, actually, I could just take back at the end of the combination. But here, the only piece they have in hand that they can drop in my camp here would be the rook. And I seem to have defended against the possibility of a rook draw. Okay, they're trying to get more pieces attacking. Um, makes sense. Hmm. Okay, I protect this window. Hmm, they're threatening a pawn drop on this head. All right, I see. Hmm. If their pawns could prevent my king from running up the board, they would, but they can't, so they shan't. Oh, okay. That's resourceful. That is quite resourceful. Yeah, promoted pawns this close to my king are immensely concerning. You know, chess would be more exciting if pawns could promote all over the place. Yeah, I looked at this. Did I miss something? Okay, I did miss something, but it's not obvious. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a different way they could do this exchange. Um, hmm.
30秒40秒 They're attacking quite strongly. As is their right. They can drop the gold and continue this attack from the side. It's this isn't as decisive as I imagined it to be. It's a very strong attack. What can I say? Yeah, their dragon hits, my king runs. Uh, their gold hits, and I have to give back material. This is a sign that I've not defended properly. Although I'm starting to defend properly, but I've not done so yet. Yeah, my rook has nowhere to go. Well, the good news is that I activate my rook um, by exchanging it. My opponent did everything they could to prevent it from becoming active, and in some sense they succeeded. They weren't able to... I wasn't able to use my rook directly. Um, but now I don't have that issue. Sanjudio. So yeah, this knight move lost a valuable tempo. Mm Sanjudio Yonjudio Kojudio Itch Nick 
三四五六。Yeah, I was debating: do I save this for a later time, or is now the right time to do it? Now is the right time to do this before the attack consumes my king. I mean, maybe a bishop drop. Yeah, yeah, actually. That's six one way, half a dozen the other. Bishop drop would have been really threatening, too. Um. Start the attack with the pawn. Pawn moves cannot be reversed. <laughs> yeah, it's forced. Um... I would have struggled to bring myself to play that, but that is forced. So they can take my knight and lance at this point. The knight and the lance won't help them. I mean, they could help, but it's so difficult to defend this. Still, doing nothing is even worse than that, so... Um... Sanjudio
So the knight, I've broken up this shape. So if and when the king starts running, the bishop promotes and um, yeah, I'm threatening mate from both sides. I thought I needed the knight to support this. I thought somehow with the silver still here, this attack didn't work. Um, yeah, I thought moving the silver out was going to make this attack more convincing. Maybe it is, because now if the rook moves over... Well, no. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wait now. Do I have enough? Gold takes silver. I don't know. It's close. Sanjubio. All right, this seems good enough. <laughs> oh, that's a fork. Beautiful. Wow. All right. Um, I'm impressed. I'm so impressed. I'm going to let you win my rook. They don't have time to win the rook. Oh, maybe I should have tried to win the rook while it was still... Like, if they move the king over... Now this, fish, this silver drop doesn't win a rook. Um, well, now the king cannot move over. Yeah, moving the king over might have been the move with the best resistance. Thanks for the game. If I missed some 
swifter checkmate. I apologize. I was not toying around. Um, I was trying to find a mate there. It's just sometimes it's challenging, you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they initially proposed a time and I overslept the original match time. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Nice. So yeah, following each uh, teaching ladder game, we do um, the game review uh, starting from the top. It's my preference. Oh, all right, cool. Looks like I'll be leading the game review. Escape artist will be joining us, apparently, unless they're just peeping in. But um, yeah, this... <laughs> Yeah, this is an opening idea that I just don't remember. Uh, maybe I've never studied it. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. Nice. All right, so yeah, I can type not as much. Still speak the same ideas, understanding there's a little bit of a delay through the live stream, but yeah, I don't recall exactly the move order and everything. I've tried this before. I really have because I want some system I can play against everything. And it's, I don't think there's any problem with this, other than it forces you to play Silver 7-7. Seven, seven. Once you've played the Silver up, you have to commit to this, and you might not want to commit to it. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> uh, bummer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need to type that. Yeah, it's... Toba does some good videos. So this silver is not good for Senta. Oh, okay. Well, it's committal. I think it's okay. I think Senta's still better, but this isn't the shape that you're aiming for. Um, I think what you're trying to do is bring this out like that and something like this, and sometimes that requires other moves, too. I think that's what you're trying to do, but when you play it through this move order, um, where I've started to castle, you haven't started to castle, and I have the option to make things crazy, this kind of forces your hand. So I think this is fine. I've played it before. I think it's playable, but the only way it's playable is if you do this, and so if you don't want to do this, then you're wanting a different move order. Then again, I think Senta's better here. Like, this isn't what I want to play. I normally want to put the silver somewhere else. But I think you're still better. I think you keep all of your... or a good part of your opening advantage this way. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the downside, like you point out, is you haven't castled yet. Um... So, I guess, yeah, like, if you're unsure, like, when in doubt, spend a turn or two castling, because you know you're going to have to do that anyway. Um, but if you're not in doubt, bring the silver out. I actually don't remember how this is supposed to go. I don't remember. But yeah, when in doubt, spend a little time castling. Like, here, I didn't know what to do. I just said, you know, I'm going to put my king to safety. And then this opportunity presents itself where this is hanging, and I'm like, oh, you know? Okay, I can make use of this. I suddenly know what to do. Um, whereas, like, through a different move order, this wouldn't be such a shot. Like, if your king were safe, then I wouldn't be so cavalier about doing that. Um, anyway, we ended up here. I think this, is, again, is fine for Senta. It's just maybe not what you want it to do. So I keep asking, like, where's the king going to go? Which shape are you making to attack? Which shape are you making to defend? And you built a really flexible shape. 
this yeah this is as flexible as it can get um and remains flexible uh i guess i should ask what this is about it's flexible i'm just confused uh, <laughs> uh i think you keep the option either for twin gold or didn't commit yeah this is something i've done before um yeah no, I think you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of good possibilities here. Um, it's hard to commit to something when you don't know if it's going to work or not. <laughs> it really is. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. So, somehow attack the pawn structure over here using the silver. That makes sense. That's really good. Yeah, like... If there were some obvious flaw with it, um, I wouldn't be asking a question. I would be offering criticism. So, yeah, that's the idea here. You're building a four-general castle that's really strong and offering a bishop exchange and wanting things to get complicated. And that's cool. Yeah, you didn't really commit to any shape, and that's fine. As long you did spend some time defending your king, so this is good. Yeah. Um, the only criticism, I guess, uh, was, again, you got what you wanted, but there's another way to get there. It doesn't spend so much time. Um, uh, again, this is totally fine and good. Like, who am I to punish a move given up here, a move given up there? I'm pushing pawns because I have no idea what to do. Um, so yeah, there's another way to get there, but... You got what you wanted, and it's totally fine. Um, many players would frown on an early retreat like this, but I think you have a clear idea. You want to build a really strong shape, so I don't like suddenly attack this. I guess my pushing pawns like this, like this, like this, is trying to make you nervous, and I think I succeeded. <laughs> I think I made you nervous, and you're like, yeah, actually, yeah, let's go defend the king. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm shuffling these pawns because I don't really know what shape you're building. I don't know how to attack it. Yeah, <laughs> so I succeeded in this objective. Um, a year or two ago, I was playing a game against Destiny, and I did much the same thing here. I just threw all the pawns on the right side of the board here, as you say. And uh, yeah, suddenly I had quite the vicious attack going. I think it ended up like with my bishop up here, my rook over there. I somehow had a very, very nice position against Destiny at a time where I was still a Q player, and I was questioning, like, what the heck even happened? How is this so effective? Um, but yeah, we ended up playing some weird Joseki that neither of us knew perfectly. And the idea of just attacking the king was quite opportunistic. Granted, I could not follow through and defeat Destiny. He's much too good a player. But yeah, I made you nervous because yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't want to move my silver because then I'd be hanging my bishop too. Um, yeah, I we're both playing really flexible things here. I finally move my gold, which is super heavy. But moving the gold, now that you've spent this time dancing, um, I can afford one turn to give up on this so I can get this guy moving. Or I guess it doesn't go there directly. I guess it goes... I'm not even sure where I'm going. I have no idea. Maybe I'm going this way. <laughs> Maybe I'm building a different castle. If I see you attacking in a given shape and I recognize the shape, maybe I'll build a different castle. But for now, I have no idea. So, yeah, this clarifies that you have an edge file attack being part of what you're doing. Uh, I was sorely tempted to push this. Shogi Harbor has taught me uh, several times, don't push this pawn as Gota. It's a loss of time. Um, and it accelerates your attack. 
I still struggle to understand it, but I did manage to resist pushing this. Uh, my counterpoint to Shogi Harbor's point is that, um, yeah, if I play this just um, as Gota here, this tends to lose a move, and I'm in a position where I'm already down because I'm Gota. So, I'm, so I can't give up the move just yet. When things calm down across the board, then I have time for this. But my the thing I eventually discovered, the reason I don't have to push this pawn, is because sometimes I can push this one. And then bring the silver up, and the silver covers this edge square. Otherwise, if you don't push the edge pawn, it, you just your position sucks. I mean, yeah, this... I don't know. Like... I really like pushing the edge pawn when I played Mino Castle, because it gives my king somewhere to run if things go horribly wrong. But, um, yeah, this is another idea to protect the square. Um, and it's kind of like the idea that I produced during the game. So, yeah, I don't fully understand this, but... I know that as Gota, if I were to push this, I would just lose time. Yeah. Yeah, it's surprisingly hard to attack. I think sometime earlier, uh, this year maybe, or, yeah, I think this year, uh, somebody played the same idea against me, and I couldn't figure out what how to break it. Turns out that, like, in many positions I could just give away the pawn. It's just a pawn. Um, and it would take you time to take and retreat. And meanwhile, I could build this and drop another pawn where that one stands. It, it really surprises me that this sort of thing is playable at all. But yeah, so um, Bald Mino is a shape. So uh, yeah. The other reason this is hard for you to figure out how to attack is because I was constantly monitoring what's your attack and how am I going to stop it. Um, so that didn't help either. Uh, here... Where was it? Oh yeah, never mind. During the game I refuted my own idea. I was trying to find a way to drop my bishop profitably. Just not finding a good way to do it. This... Yeah, this definitely announces your intention. Um, makes sense. If you can get away with it. <laughs> I think you can. I think it's fine. Um, the problem is that the lance no longer covers the square in front of the lance. Or that used to be in front of the lance. So if tactics show up, they can things can get complicated. Uh, so yeah, around here, because I see you've committed hard to this thing, uh, yeah, then I prepared this sometime around here, yeah. Yeah, this is a surprising bishop drop, um, because, hmm. well, I guess what makes this possible is that this is loose, and um, just knowing that, like, if any of these pieces move, I'm going to have plenty of opportunities to use my bishop. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, turns out, since you can't get everything, yeah, that's a good point. If this rook had already been over and this gold had already been protecting this, yeah, that would be a different story. But, yeah, this kind of forces your hand. It's hard to have a perfect attack and a perfect defense. It's super hard. But yeah, I had to find this move, I think. Otherwise, your edge attack gets very strong in a hurry. So you forced me to find this. Um, ah, you're wondering about this. Okay, so I would have to recapture. Um, interesting. Well, should I pose the question back at you? <laughs> what do you think my options are? Uh, the Socratic method. Uh, no, it's complicated. I'm looking too. 
Oh, what could I do? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That looks so tempting. Uh, as for whether this works or not, that's... Yeah, this is challenging. Um, I honestly don't know. Yeah, gold takes looks reasonable. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I guess I could drop this. Um, yeah, so this gold is extremely heavy unless it checkmates. I don't want to give you anything in hand because the minute I... Well, I'm sorry. The other reason this is heavy is because it blocks the knight. Um, so, yeah, here, yeah, I've given the bishop back, but the knight is blocked, and it's, I guess you're trying very hard to get the edge attack working. Um, but I'm wondering what I can do. Sorry if it sounds like I'm evading questions here, I'm just, it feels like I should have something. Like, I see I can do this, I can do that. I could drop a bishop here. I could drop a bishop other places. It feels like I should have something here. I just don't know what. Um, yeah, this... I think it's an original idea. And original ideas often are good. And often are bad, but often are good. And I think this could be a good idea. Your castle... You originally had an idea of having a... Four general castle. Now you have a three general castle plus the gold out here. I'm trying to figure out. I don't see any easy way to kick the gold. Yeah, I could drop a silver and it could maybe retreat and maybe this holds on. I just know when I start pushing things around my king, bad things happen very frequently. So I'm really nervous about doing that. But maybe it is best. Um... Oh, wait. Wait a second. May, might this be the shot that I'm looking for? Maybe this is what I'm seeking. Because if the gold moves diagonally, I have a fork. If the gold moves vertically, that blocks the rook for a turn and allows me to drop a silver back here. Um, yeah, so one idea is this. And then we exchange, like I was threatening to exchange earlier. Um, and my bishop escapes. Um, so this is a really natural defending idea, and I thought about this first. But I don't think this is the way to go. So, yeah, potentially you drop the bishop to defend this, but... You'd have to, like, drop it in a way that doesn't allow me to promote my bishop, I guess. So, maybe here? I don't like it, but maybe that's forced by here, this. And if that's forced, maybe I'm doing okay. So, I still have the silver in hand, whereas this gold is stuck here. I just don't know. This is really messy. Oh, maybe we continue with this, though, now that you have nothing to defend with. Yeah, maybe something like this. But you're attacking, too. Uh, it's a race, but it's a race where your gold is in the way. But maybe it's fine. Um... Yeah, actually, this this looks risky. Uh, no, I think you're right, actually. So maybe I don't have time for this. Maybe I need to defend like that. Yeah. There we go. Oh! <laughs> How did I miss this? Oh, that is... That's creative. Uh, okay, let's take it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope I am okay here. It's not so clear. <laughs> uh, if I take the gold, this is an uh, extremely hot mess, so we're doing this instead. Yeah, this could get difficult. I'm trying not to have my edge broken, but maybe I don't have a choice.
Also, maybe I should take the gold, but it looks extremely dangerous. At least last turn. I have to take the pawn first, I think, but... Oh, this gets complicated. Um... Yeah. Well... Um... Yeah, this is interesting. Um... Hmm. Man, it'd be nice to have a tactic here. It would be so nice to have a decisive tactic here. Why don't I have one? Oh, uh, you think this is failing? Um. Yeah, I guess I guess that's better for me. I don't know. I think Gota could have done better somehow than this. Like this... Sorry, I'm not giving very good explanations for things. Um... So... Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, the pawn drop doesn't quite do it, because silver takes pawn actually doesn't throw the game. It's really dicey, actually, isn't it? Um, maybe I take the lance, but then this pawn and lance and rook and bishop and knight all look spooky. There must have been some more solid way to go than this. Or maybe I do pawn takes... no. Yeah, silver takes is... oh wait, that's the idea. Okay, that's what shuts down this attack. This surprising move. Um, then we bring the rook over, because we can. Um, wait, no, the rook's the wrong piece. It's too heavy. Oh, yeah, this attack is shut down. I think there might have been some less complicated way for me to survive this. The silver drop seems to make things complicated in my mind, but maybe I'm just crazy. Um, yeah, like, maybe this would be an easier way for me to just not deal with so many tactics. And this... my mind shuts down the attack before it starts. But you have the lance. You get to keep the lance here. Why am I so bad at reading this? So dropping the bishop might force this bishop drop and this bishop drop exchange might not be profitable for me. So yeah, your original idea. I'm slowly warming to this idea because I'm not liking anything else here. Um, yeah. Not liking my ideas. So I think I like your idea better. And this, yeah, indeed does seem to just ward off the attack. Um, one potential... Oh wait, I forgot this. Gold cannot retreat diagonally, but I was going to say if you could retreat it back here and then push the pawn twice, then I'd have to like move away. But this actually takes one, two, three, four moves to pull off, bringing the pawn into place. And within four moves, hopefully my king could run or something like that. So, yeah, the silver drop looks reasonable. Um, yeah. Uh, so back, so this is the first idea, was bishop takes silver. Which I really wanted to do under some pretense that maybe it breaks up the castle and makes it easier to play this position. That was my knee-jerk reaction. That was my impulse reaction. Um, you know, I'm being kind of an idiot here. Um, uh, don't I have this? Where I'm still threatening stuff on both wings. 
If I'm going to give back the bishop anyway, why don't I threaten this first? Yeah, so we defend this. Uh, now we take the silver. I'm a genius. <laughs> oh man, a little patience goes a long way. I didn't even set this up as a trap or anything, I just now saw it. Uh, so yeah, point number one is this. Um, so I guess the gold goes here or something to defend it. It's fine. Um, taking the silver still looks interesting here. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, this is nice. And we got this too. So maybe the first line was better, ironically. Because, like, this one, instead of getting forked, this one, the knight... Wait, no. Well, the knight's hanging in every line. Uh, you can defend the knight, though. Yeah. Um. Okay. So now what do I do? I don't want a bishop drop in my own camp to hit my rook and gold and all that stuff. So let's take this, I guess, and then take a lance. So, yeah. I guess... The plus side of your attack with the gold is that the gold can support the attack. Uh, the minus side is you don't have a castle. And I get the lance. Um, the position's probably even-ish, despite me having a lance. But if I get an attack going ever, uh, it's going to be one lance heavier. Uh, also, my silver is playing off in the corner, which is kind of dumb. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny you say that. So these edge file attacks aren't my specialty. I really struggle understanding them. So, yeah, I think it behooves us to look at how the game proceeded and see if there was another chance here somewhere. Um, like, yeah, after this fork, things get really dicey. Um, so the rook behind the pawn, it's something you do in a chess endgame is put the rook behind the past pawn. But here the rook is bottled up behind its own pawn. This just flat out loses a move. Um, oh man, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but... This looks... well, I guess part of the purpose of defending the pawn is to try to trap my bishop, which you eventually did. You trapped it. Um, but... Ugh. Um, yeah, I wonder... just the rook behind the pawn's not a convincing attacking shape. It was a good defensive shape. Yeah, well, rook 9-8... I think what you're concerned about might be this, right? It's the same concern. It's just here your rooks may be on a better square. Or maybe you're trying to trap my bishop, and to trap it you need to defend this pawn. Maybe that's part of it. Um, also, I guess you're afraid that my bishop promotes here. I didn't see that until now. Um, hmm. Yeah, so I guess you're concerned about my bishop drop promotion stuff. But if my bishop is such a concern, uh, maybe just take it, right? This is what I'd planned. And then you do this again? Yeah, the promotion was what concerned you. You must have looked... well, maybe you looked at this. Um, so, you saw my gold and my silver and rook advancing. I was slowly trying to produce something with, like, my knight, rook, silver, everything, just attacking toward your king. 
Um, well, okay. I see. Yeah, and I guess you didn't see the combination that happened. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, generally a gold is not the piece you'd want to bring up the board. But here, I think I would have done it anyway, because it makes way for my knight. Um, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm wanting to push this and drop the bishop behind it, and bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes sort of stuff. But I don't know how this works. I keep making threats, but that doesn't mean I understand what I'm doing. Um... It's easier for me to make a threat than to actually prove that it's a good threat. So, yeah, this is kind of what I was threatening to do. You have, like, four pieces protecting this. I have four attacking it. Um, and, yeah, it does help my gold. I'm sorry, yeah, that does help my knight out. Okay, I see. Yeah, so in that sense, yeah, this does help me advance my pieces. My gold would be far happier closer to my king, but I can't really make that happen now. Or maybe I can and I'm just blind. Maybe I should be doing pawn takes here and bringing the gold over the knight up, the pawn up, something like this. Maybe that's the way forward for me. I was really confused by this position. But if I bring the knight out and the rook over then, yeah, maybe somehow I can kick the... No, I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm attacking, because I'm not sure if I start attacking heavily on this left side, your king runs to the right. And if I attack heavily in the center, your king runs to the left. It's actually extremely confusing what I'm supposed to do here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> This pawn takes looks nice, but I don't know how to follow it up, especially with your bishop being having lots of bishop drop threats and my castle not being the most secure thing ever. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I guess I prefer gold takes. Just trying to hold this together in the center and giving my knight fast access to something, but... I'm not sure what I do here. Um, yeah, pawn takes is probably right. I just don't see how I can do anything after doing that. Um, the more space I give open up here, the more places there are you can drop a bishop. Um, maybe. So. Um, so I guess the way I can answer that is that the definition of the end game is that it's that phase of the game where there's a mutual attack, or at least where the king is no longer able to run. I think that's what we call the end game. So just strictly by that particular definition that the end game is when the king cannot run, you would say that the middle game, it's maybe okay to run. Um, but yeah, in the end game, it's too late. I think that's how I define these words. Um, but yeah. I th uh, so then comes the question of, well, how do you know which phase you're in? How do you know if it's okay to move the king or not? Because like, that's a circular definition. Um, yeah, I don't know what you do about that. But yeah, I think here I've your shape looks really flexible and it has four generals in it. So yeah. Yeah, we've had some fun games in the past. Um and uh yeah, a rigid king sitting in the center can sometimes be a good idea. Particularly if I make some obvious weakness and you just smash it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's so hard in Shogi. 
So like here, I've not decided my attack shape because I don't know what your defense shape is. And you haven't decided your defense because you don't know how I'm attacking. And there's always this tension of attack and defense. And it's hard to fine tune that. See, so yeah, there are some extremes. One where you just don't ever move the king. Another where you play Anaguma and just bury it in the corner with all the generals protecting it. Um, then there's everything in between. And pros play all these things. Um, although maybe not Anaguma. I don't know how many pros uh, regularly play that. But yeah, you missed this tactic. And uh, you defended very, better than I expected. Not just defended very well, but defended better than I expected here. Um, or maybe vice versa, I don't know. Like, what I'm trying to say is this is a really good defense. It surprised me. Just how uh, frequently I've been on the receiving end of your attacks, and we've had some crazy mutual attack games. But here, where your attack died off, um, I was not expecting to find any resistance. Or maybe, what do I say? Like, when I get in this sort of situation where my attack is just dead, I get discouraged. I just, it's very difficult to find good moves in such a hard position. But yeah, you held in there and presented a lot of difficult problems for me to try to solve. And I'm not sure I solved them right. Um, yeah, this is a hard problem already. Like, what do I do? My horse is trapped. And I saw, well, I could take the could start taking stuff and untrap my horse. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I misread this during the game. During the game, I didn't think I could do this. Maybe it's playable though. Hmm. No, no, that's just dumb. Yeah. Oh, uh, bishop takes. Uh, yeah, also that. Yeah, that's a strong counterattack. Uh, I don't have any shot here. I thought there were going to be a lot of tactics in situations like this. Like, yeah, I can do this. But it's probably not worth it. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, I could try to be greedy. Yeah. Well, the knight came from me taking the knight here. Um, but I think if gold takes... Uh, yeah, actually, it's funny. Yeah, I don't seem to have a convincing way to continue here. Well, oh no, what I'm trying to do is pounce on the fact that this bishop has nowhere to go. Um, and I can almost do that. Like... This is tricky, isn't it? So yeah, maybe bishop takes is actually better. Because uh, the tactics here are really sharp. And the odds of something being missed are quite high. So yeah, I guess bishop takes, despite walking into a fork, might be the sensible way to go here. Um, I guess you can defend the fork. <laughs> Um, goodness. When do I run out of tricks? Soon, but when? Um. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I guess the point is I was trying to find something that maybe works here. Because, like, it feels like I should have something. Where is my shot? Let's say I were to do this, like I were suggesting, and then we exchange here too. I have two generals in hand. It's still... I don't have an attack here. Damn. Yeah, so... 
Maybe what I did was actually best, even though I didn't like it. <laughs> um, maybe retreating was stupid. Maybe that was my blunder. Uh huh. Yeah, I probably should just play this, right? I miss this. Uh, well, this this is begging for you to attack me, but no, no, it's fine. I was nervous for my own king's safety here. But maybe I don't need to be so nervous. Maybe I've completely shut down the attack and it's fine for me to be a bit aggressive here. I think what happened in the game um, still had me a, a bit advantageous, but here I'm just not seeing a way for Senta to continue. Oh, knight takes first. Oh. That's clever. Um... Hmm. Okay, then I have to take here, I assume. And then I assume you sack the knight. One of these two points. Maybe this is how you get your attack rolling again. That's with heavy material loss. Um... You were thinking silver fork. Oh, you're thinking I could... Sorry. I missed that. You were drawing an arrow. I missed it. Oh, this fork. Uh, maybe. Here, I would be extremely happy to see the attack end as soon as possible. Um. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This That prevents the knight fork. Because once I have a knight, I could drop the knight here, and that would hit this. Um, so yeah, that makes sense to avoid this fork. Oh, this silver fork. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this. Oh, right, because there's that freaking bishop. It's right there. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So that's a really good point. <laughs> so I probably should pay some attention to that. Um, during the game, I was idly considering stuff like this. Um, maybe that's the way to go. Although this... Uh, I don't like this. <laughs> but yeah, giving you a silver there would be dangerous for me. That's a good silver fork Ob observation. Uh, I was going to say observance and then corrected myself. But, um, but then this escapes the silver attack. And I'm trying to decide if it's worth giving up my lance. Oh, well, it might be. I could drop a knight here and threaten to take the rook, but then this attack speeds up. I don't want to give up the lance, um, so I'd have to like fight back like this. Or like something. Maybe move the gold instead of the uh, knight. The knight move looks reasonable. but um, And then this gives you time to protect the knight and continue your attack. And uh, maybe I have a shot somewhere. Oh, right. There's the shot. And then silver takes. And I survive the attack, and then the lance is still vulnerable here. Huh. It's funny. All these tactics that work in the game... Um... They work for two reasons. 
Reason one is that this square opened up for a bishop drop. But reason two that this all these things become successful is because this got played preparing this, but then this didn't land fast enough. So now the lance is hanging in every line. So, yeah. It was enough to bait me into attacking this corner instead of attacking toward the king. Um, but, yeah. So two things made this possible. One, the vulnerable lance... I mean, the king's safety, you could always bring into question, but you have enough generals protecting it. It's just, whenever I start attacking, if I have enough pieces, this is going to be really hard to defend. So I'm trying to gain one piece first, so my attack hits harder. Um, but yeah, it's this bishop drop in combination with the vulnerable lance that makes this attack succeed. It doesn't hurt me that like this pawn is really far back. So, yeah, what you were able to do was surround my horse, and I didn't read out, um, if I'd read out what I was just suggesting a minute ago, which was... Oh, what was I suggesting? I don't remember. Goodness. Um... I think it was this pawn advance. If I read this out correctly, this maybe could have given me a knight. And then I could have used that knight to help my attack. Oh wait, but no, you have the silver fork here. I can't do that yet. We are looking at some other line. I had to play this. You did play that. Um... Hmm. Yeah, what am I going to do about the Silver Fork? We I missed this in our post-game analysis until now. I need to... feels like I need to do something about it. Um, oh, no, that's fine. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I was just remarking that what made this attack succeed is, one, the bishop drop possibility that did open... And two, that this lance is hanging. I mean, yeah, the bishop protects it, but how effective can that be? It's not going to work forever. Um, so I was trying to find some way uh, to defend against this fork. Yeah. Uh, huh. Oh wait, can I do this? Can I do this anyway? No, because you don't walk into this. You don't do that. You promote over here. You move over here. And this doesn't promote. Never mind. Um... But I'm just super confused trying to stop the silver fork thing. Which seems really hard to stop. Um, maybe I can stop it with something like this. Maybe that's the key idea I've been missing this whole time. I don't know. There's some some shot in all of this. So, I did survive this series of tactics, but maybe should not have survived it. I don't... I'm quite confused. But yeah, this condenses my castle and makes it harder to hit and deals with the silver fork. Um... We'd started this uh, with some question in mind. My question, I guess, was at what point do I get to play this and win the bishop? Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's super difficult to shut down this attack. 
So I was relieved during the game to find this way that I could actually remove your bishop. Yeah, it cost me my horse, but it's fine. I got the lance. I shut down the rook. I shut down the bishop. I was glad to see this. Um... Was there some other way Santa could have attacked here? Maybe that was the line of questioning we were trying to answer. I don't remember. Um, wait, I retreated my gold. Why did I do that? I misread what was going on here. I can defend things this way. And then I am threatening all these things. Well, maybe, maybe not. Sorry, maybe not that one, but this one for sure. This is a threat. Um. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, that works for me. Um, yeah, absolutely, that's definitely an option. That allows me to use this super large board. I apologize that this is surely running late in the day for you. Uh, so I apologize that it's like, I'm just so late on this. But no, this is actually fine. Um, I'll pay attention to Twitch. Yeah, I have a separate view. I can see the chat pretty easily here. So yeah, I've opened up that chat for any and all comments. And we can use the large board for analysis. That's entirely fine. Sorry that uh, I started late with the game. Um, but yeah, this is complicated. Um, so... Yeah, when you drop this bishop, I hadn't even considered this. And my point with this is that if you promote, I can take here. And yes, that's a promotion, but here I get to take that. Yeah, welcome. Um, so, uh, yeah, this might have been my smartest way to go that shuts down the silver fork possibility while also taking advantage. Here you've got two pieces in front of the rook. Here you've got a pawn in front of the lance. Here the knight can't really move out because I've claimed the square already. So I was super focused on shutting down the attack. Um... And, yeah, maybe this rook move would have been a good defensive play, too. Uh, it's funny, our proverb that we saw right above there uh, a few minutes ago, or many minutes ago, was without attack, there's no chance of winning. Um, but, yeah, this bishop drop does protect the knight. and does make a threat, but I think I can parry the threat by just moving the rook out of the way. The gold retreat does make the gold prone to a silver fork, and so I shouldn't have done that. I was just so taken aback that, like, around here this position looked super advantageous, and then a couple moves later I was really struggling, and I could not figure out why. And the reason why is because I was trying to prevent this bishop from promoting. If I just move the rook over and then defended this some other way eventually, then this knight could have been mine, maybe. But maybe not. Maybe there's... You can't take this square, because I've already got it. The rook could get unblocked and could defend them. Well, no, this, I have this now. Um, mm. I'm struggling to find a good move. Feels like there should be something. I mean, I keep saying when in doubt, just build up the castle, but then that makes obvious that this side is the weakness. Or if you build it up this way, then this, the center is the weakness. So building out the castle in the midst of an attack is kind of rough, but what can one do here? If you exchange silvers, I could just do a silver drop fork, uh, unless... Uh, unless you take this way. But then if you capture this way, do I have a shot here? I'm looking. 
Um, I mean, I let you promote. I take the knight. I think it's due to stuff like this that we were looking at knight capturing earlier, but here... Yeah, maybe it's not bad. Maybe that's reasonable. But yeah, it's important to get the rook and the lance into this attack, because that's what makes the attack work. Silver drops 7-9. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to prep that sort of... Oh, do I have the silver here? Oh. Yeah, so here, instead of attacking the bishop, I do have the silver. So I previously started to mention this, which would just be walking into a fork. Then the different line, this didn't work out. And this line, does this work out? Uh, maybe. Like, here, I could take this. And I could take drop here. And the rook runs away. Now, you might ask, why not just drop there and guarantee... Well, yeah, I should just guarantee that I win the rook. Never mind. It's a good question. So, yeah, here I can silver drop fork to get a rook, and I have my pieces playing around at the corner, but I get the rook and the attack from the front. Without a lance, without a rook, it's going to be kind of difficult. Um, silver 7-9, then promote bishop 5-8. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, we take the promoted bishop, put it on 5-8. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm somewhat amused that winning the rook might not be the right idea anymore. That the thing I was starting to look at, I'm liking more and more, actually. Um, that looks interesting. So I get a knight for um, all these exchanges, but I have an attack. Eh, maybe I should just win the rook. Winning the rook is probably the smart thing to do. Yeah, this is needlessly complicated, so yeah, we should just drop the gold here instead. This still allows this promotion. Um, I guess you take the gold or take the silver or something. Um, and promote this before it gets trapped. Um, yeah, the this is good. You're right. Yeah. So, that uh, expertly done. I have no correction to that. That is the correct answer. Um, and for further elaboration on why that's correct, we still can use the silver before this knight hits here. We remove the knight. Um, maybe using the silver this way is not accurate. Maybe I should use it this way. But then this can start to hit. So removing the pawn has some value. Oh, plus this clears away for the rook to join. Yes, yeah, so this is pretty nice. Uh, what's the material count? I've got a rook, I've got a rook. I've got a silver, gold, gold, silver, knight, knight, lance, lance. So material is even. I've got a promoted silver, you've got a promoted bishop. Material is even. This is dangerous because my rook is prone, but also dangerous because the king is prone. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so a silver drop 7 9 leads to this situation, which I think is still unclear. And I think that that's good. But for me, that's an okay outcome. Uh, I'm being greedy now, and I'm wanting more than unclear. 
Um, maybe I... Yeah. What was it? We were looking at this earlier, and I suggested a move, and I don't remember my suggestion. So Silver 7-9 is probably quite heavy and leads to unclear position. That's fine. Oh yeah, my suggestion was just push the pawn. Yeah, I think this is the lighter of the two approaches. But here, this could be met by hitting the horse. Yeah, actually, this is dangerous, because if you... Hmm... Something like this. My horse is trapped again. Oh, but I want a gold. And I don't have... Well, I don't know. Maybe this is quite dangerous. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that, because you're the only one attacking. Mm, yeah, you're... Uh, this likewise seems unclear. <laughs> I wish I could like get a better position and it be clear that it's better. Maybe this. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. If Rook takes, I get another piece. But even that doesn't stop the attack. Uh, shit. Well, okay, at some point, how many pieces is enough? Yeah, okay. So, I take here, and then horse gets kicked. Um... Hmm. Your attack continues. And you have a promoted bishop drop whenever you want it. Man, yeah, your idea I like better than my idea here. That silver 7-9 is quite interesting. This is getting dicey, and I feel like I should have something, but I'm just not finding it. Um. Hmm. Yeah, this attack is really nice. So, um, hmm. I mean, the craziest line would be something like this. Maybe this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, so, in this line, threatening this way and this way. Even if the rook moves, I still have the fork. Um, this might be the secret to getting the attack stopped. Although if you're really, really committed to this attack... Um, you give up this gold right next to the king. And then you keep going. Um, and now I need an attack that's faster than this thing. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, it'd be nice if I had a severe attack over here. I just don't think I do, because my gold is one step back. If my gold were on 4-4, I could bring out the knight, push this, like, do a lot of fun stuff with the gold and the pawns on the knight and the horse, but this gold is blocking my attack. Um, your attack is seemingly one move faster. I guess the only thing I can do to try to shut it down would be something like this. Uh, could send to nine, rook nine eight after the bishop drop. Oh yeah, we could take a look at that. Yeah, that might be the right way to go, because this other way I, well, <laughs> it's legal. Uh, sorry, I apologize, I didn't mean this in any sarcastic way. Um, no, like, unfortunately this is a shot in this line. Um... 
So, yeah, I'm trying very hard to get this attack shut down because it's it's a very fast attack, and my attack is not fast at all. So I need to have something that shuts down the rook as soon as possible. Um, oh, right, so a second ago, or a moment ago, I was pointing out this and this fork. Um, so then we can get into lines like this, right? Where we don't have that fork because the gold's not here. Um, but yes, yeah, similarly, this if this is met with that, etc. So that soul's not quite in the cards. Um, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's fine to allow this because the attack still continues. But no, it doesn't. I get to shut down the rook, and I've removed the lance, and so, okay, yeah. Uh, so that's point two, where if you try to remove my horse with this gold or that gold, in each case I still have a bishop drop after I take the bishop. Variation three. We're going to invest this silver super far away from my king to forcibly remove this horse. Um... And this way, there's not a fork. But, well, in fact, this actually defends this point, too. <laughs> no! No! This this ruins my idea. <laughs> now can we do this? Oh, well, maybe. Shit. Uh, oh, no. Where have we gone? I mean, this is getting spooky. So I could invest the silver super far away from this king and hope that you fall into this trap. Um, but maybe just give up the rook instead. And then I have a silver doing nothing. Uh-huh. But I think the larger point here is that you still have an attack in other lines. Um... Man, it's really hard to kill off an attack. It's like really, really hard. So... Goodness. But yeah, I, it's important that I hit this while the rook is still bottled behind this pawn. Like, if you could move the rook here, this gets complicated. Well, I mean, yeah, if, like these pawns have been exchanged or up, down a file... I could have to invest another piece to try to chase this, but um, I guess in this variation, because the rook still has nowhere to go, uh, it's still a reasonable variation for me. Um, so, what is the conclusion here? I think the conclusion is that if I take this bishop, and if this rook is bottled up, um, the rook is a really easy target, and anything else that's a target is also a target. So, it's target practice. Um, therefore, immediately trying to win this horse is greedy. Therefore, I have to invert the move order and look at all these variations. But, um, uh, the point here, I guess, is that I take that, and, okay, yeah, that's the end of the variation. So... Yeah, I think this this does evict my horse. Um, I'm not... So I don't want to... I don't know. Possibly... No. I was going to say maybe taking the horse here is not good. As compared to taking this and trying this attack. But here you don't have a piece in hand to join the attack. And I'm sorry, I still have this. So I didn't see that. So yeah, this capture... Uh, this drop... This hits the bishop. Um, then you take... I take here. So I've shut down the attack. So that can't be allowed, because our proverb was that without attack, there is no chance of victory. 
So all three moves that try to win the horse immediately do not win the horse. This knight is hanging. The rook is bottled up. Yeah, I should have just pushed this. The only other variation is this one. We just voluntarily give the knight. At least I think this is the only other main one to look at. Because the pawn's hitting the bishop, and that's pretty severe. But here, the knight, it's just given. Um, and I think it's more important that I shut down the rook and the attack before taking any of this. But also I could just consider trying to surround the bit. No, 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 this is bad. This is not the right direction. This gets your attack moving again. I don't want to... I prefer not to do that. Maybe I don't have a choice, but... Let's pretend for now I have a choice. Um, okay, yeah, so now if the rook tries to stay with this attack, I can still remove it. Um, so at some point you no I was going to say at some point you realize that the rook is not worth saving but that's not accurate either yeah this I think is just I found a way to stop an attack finally it was very difficult to stop but I think we found a way so knight takes doesn't work either. So none of these attacking ideas in this corner of the board seem to be working. Uh, there's this shot, which tries to open up promotion lines to take the knight and the lance. Um, I think here... I think here I'd have to run away and allow this, and I take the knight. And again, I've shut down the attack, and I'm content with this. So, yeah. Um, at what point could all this have been avoided? Is the next question. Um, so. All of these shots where I end up surrounding the rook using a bishop and a silver are possible because the silver has danced a lot. This is the silver that went here, and then here, and then here, and then I think he went here, and then up and back. So it's a silver that's spent one, two, three, four, five, six moves to end up here. Um, and unfortunately, uh, well, yeah, I guess um, during the game I allowed this to become effective, but if I had just taken it, I don't think any of the variations are working out. My, It's funny, my impulse reaction when we were first doing PGA here was to do this shape, and you pointed out that there was this knight fork, but I think we're seeing that just there's traps in every line here. I didn't even see the silver fork, but yeah, there's just tactics everywhere. Uh, wait, we, we looked at this earlier and I concluded why this was maybe not super great. What was complicated about this? Was it just that like, yeah, they tell us not to run from a fork, but we're running anyway? Or was there something more? I don't remember. But yeah, uh, this dancing silver cost you four moves instead of going here directly. Um, and so these four moves were moves you could have used to either get the rook behind the lance or get the pawn moving or I don't know. Uh, so yeah, it costs some time to get this shape that unfortunately didn't quite work out. I should have brought the rook over instead of bringing the sil the gold down, because with the gold down, now there become all kinds of... There's the silver fork. Um, although I could probably walk away with the rook, and silver takes gold, rook takes, and then other tactics follow, and I'm probably fine. But 
Yeah, the rook should be here instead of where the gold is. Because um, I can't break open the center file anymore. My rook's going to be slated to be useful on the second file, or maybe the third file, but probably second file. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so this silver, I think this sort of thing, this is why, oops, how did this happen? This, I think, contributed, um, this castle moving away from the king is perhaps what made it risky for the king. And the, this attack works only under the circumstance where, like, uh, once you exchange the pieces, you still have an attack. Here I've actually somehow shut down the attack, which I'm stunned to have done. Yeah, this uh, lance drop was wrong-minded. Shouldn't be aiming like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. The silver here is actually quite inefficient. Um, that's a really good point. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I did get four... I mean, maybe I burned a tempo here or a tempo there pushing pawns. But somehow it feels like I gained one move throughout all this. So you like you spent four, six moves getting the silver here. I spent a lot of moves getting my silver up here and my pawns here and all this stuff. Um. But yeah, you're right. This, this silver on the edge is actually extremely distant from this king. Um. So yeah, maybe this is fine. I like that I've taken an initiative here. Um, I don't like my lance drop anymore. I liked, during the game, the lance drop seemed to win material, but... Uh, I should not have done it. I wanted to win material because you have all these pieces still threatening me. I was thinking about this. And then the rook moves away from the silver. And actually, no, that just buries the silver. Never mind. I was also thinking lightly about this. Um, and what did I not like about it? I don't know. For some reason, like, I started to look at this and probably should have looked more at it. Um, yeah, I started to look at this, um, or maybe dropping the second bishop might not be the right idea. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe this bishop drop is quite sensible. And the rook runs away, and then this, and maybe there's a way to hold this together. Hmm. Yeah, you would think so. This looks more convincing than what actually happened. I did the lance drop first, and this allowed you to consolidate your pieces back together, which is really smart. Uh, yeah, I ultimately did play this, but I wasn't able to hit gold because I gave you time to consolidate here. On the other hand, I did break up your attack, so maybe this is the right... maybe this is fine. I'm not happy in retrospect because it felt like somehow... I don't know. This gives you time, but it's not easy. Um... Hmm. Yeah, what do you do with the tempo here? I didn't see how you would spend it, but you probably have a way to spend it. I mean, bringing the generals back together is fine. It's just I get to kill the attack, and that I'm happy with that. But, um... 
trying to find a move that makes my lance drop look ridiculous. Um, oh. Maybe this is it. With the idea that the silver's kind of weird in the corner. Oh, wait a second. This is a threat. Threatening this. No, because then the rook is trapped. Oh, uh, goodness. Yeah, this isn't any smarter. So yeah, the yeah your gold retreat is fine. I'm being picky and stupid for no reason here. Uh oh, <laughs> I got the rook. Um. Yeah, I like my rooks. Uh, but it's this is a difficult position at this point. Um. Yeah, I don't see how you continue attacking unless you do what you did, so that seems forced. I missed this shot. This is a really good shot. Uh, I was upset to have missed it. That's a really good shot that like, points out that my lance drop is maybe not the right idea. Here... Um, yeah, if I had just taken the pawn, this is probably what I should have done here. And then if the bishop moves, then I can take the knight and just keep attacking. Right? Yeah, I've even got lance takes knight next. So I messed up. I should have taken this way. I guess you would have had to recapture this way. And now I have a dragon. Um, yeah, I was too excited by what happened. I was much too excited that I actually stopped one of your attacks. I don't think I've had that experience before, where I was like, okay, now only one of us has an attack. I've not seen that. And so, in my excitement, uh, I allowed you to have an attack again. <laughs> and yeah, here... Uh, clearly, like, I played this knight move. It's slow. I should just keep hitting this lance. It's a free lance. Yeah, you've got a bishop and a rook in hand. But I should take the free things when they're offered. Um, at least I didn't see a good way for you to save this. So this is a big miss on my part. Not big in terms of game outcome, just a really fundamental... I should have seen this thing. It's right there. And this underscores, I guess... Um, uh, what is it? So back here, when I dropped the rook in the first place, uh, I knew I would be getting an initiative. I just didn't know how big of an initiative I'd get. Wait, so... I'm sorry, what I was trying to point out is that giving the rook here... Well, I guess it keeps your attack alive. But it also gives me an attack. Um, so, during the game, expecting something more like this, I guess. Um, or moving the rook somewhere else. And, yeah, it's unpleasant, but now I have to, like, start over because I put my lance in the wrong space. My lance should be over on this side. It shouldn't be over here. On the other hand, I survived your attack, and I was quite thrilled about that. But, um... I wonder, what about this? Oh, wait, now there's this. Duh. Yeah, so... Maybe the bishop drop is best, because it keeps your attack trying to move forward, but that's just, unfortunately, the tactics don't quite work out here. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe the lance move is too much. Well, no, you have to move it. I forced you to move it. Um, I don't know why I dropped this. Hmm, I don't know. The further we get into this game, the more I realize I don't know it that well. I guess my point here is I wanted to take this, 
with promotion and defend my king. Um, I was half expecting something like that. Uh, but I think I survived this. Ah, hmm. uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think the one, or at least, I get, I understand the reasoning. The unfortunate bit here is that this instant, there doesn't seem to be a good place to drop a bishop. Because my gold protects all these squares. Um, this gold protects these squares. Oops, so like... I seem to have everything in this area locked down. If there were going to be an bishop drop, it would probably happen right in front of my king. Um, so, yeah. That makes sense, though. I just think in this case, um, unfortunately, I don't see how to use a bishop in this position. And I was able to use my rook effectively because you hadn't built the castle yet. <laughs> um, and that's fine. It's totally fine to have a bias toward attacking. But the attack has to work. <laughs> um, it's so hard. But yeah, I think why the attack didn't work is because it took you uh, six turns to get the silver over here. Uh, where admittedly it does a good job fighting against my few, uh, forces. Um, but yeah, since it took so many turns to get that, then uh, this rook is bottled up by the other pieces and doesn't have anywhere to go. Um, so yeah, just this slowed down turn by turn. Um, and unfortunately, there just isn't enough speed. It's a very powerful attack and very scary, and that's why I reacted so much to it. But, um, yeah, the tactics unfortunately didn't weigh in your favor here. This lance drop was excellent. It surprised me. But, um, well, let's look at the end game. Why not? So this bishop drop, yeah, why not try it at this point? got to try something. Um, I was more scared about rook drops uh, taking out the lance and attacking stuff here, but a bishop is a pretty scary piece. Yeah, and this is a nice sack, and this breaks open my castle. This had me quite concerned. Um, I didn't react correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got an attack. This almost won. This is really spooky. Um, it's quite reasonable, I think. Because, uh, yeah, now I don't have a good way to react to this. I was considering, what if I just push here, but then saw like this, and thought, you know, this might be really dangerous for me. But maybe that's not... Whoops, I hit the wrong button go back. Uh, goodness, I hit the wrong button. All the buttons are right next to each other. There's an engineering design principle about that. Um, so, yeah, maybe this is a reasonable reaction, but I think better would be if I just defended both directions at once. And suddenly, um, for you to continue attacking, you'd have to give up a pawn each time you attack. Which is not a big price to give up. Um, so, oh yeah, this pawn drop. I started to look at this during the game, and I panicked. Um, so there's this and this. Oh wait, never mind, not that. Not that. Um... Then there's this. Yeah, this is not as spooky as I thought it was. Um, so I should have just taken this. Somehow I spooked myself out of it 
and I thought my rook was hanging, and it's not hanging. Um, oh, you're calculating, yeah, pawn 6-4, gold 7-4 first. Yeah, I see. Maybe. That's interesting. Yeah, your attack worked anyway. Like, I should not react to this at all. The proverb is don't run from a fork. Um, and I did run. It was... I survived it, but doesn't mean I had the right idea. Well, maybe it's fine. Uh, yeah, one drop is fine. This is fine. Yeah, my retreating from this pawn is what got me in trouble here. If I just stuck with the plan. Well, I guess you have this. I have this. If I take this pawn, you drop a rook and promote and take my stuff. Here. I mean, this is one way I can go, but actually, I can go back. And then you could repeat this and give me another pawn. And then you could repeat it, and, but no, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, this pawn drop, unless there's some way to support it, that's just a pawn. Uh, so, yeah, actually, the bishop's sack is a bit much. Okay. I got too excited during the game. I played... should have spent more of my time thinking and less of my time being excited. Um, but yeah, this, this set of sacrifices almost works out. Um, so I see, this is, you're still aiming directly for the king, and it's quite a reasonable idea. It's just, uh, tactically it didn't quite work out. Moving my knight out was dangerous, and slow. Yeah. Super dangerous and slow. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, in the first pawn drop, you're thinking, fork the horse and the king. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I took your word for it, because a lot of your ideas normally work super convincingly. Uh, yeah, so, like, for a second here, yeah, I had the same idea. Which was, uh, oh no, oh no, I lost my rook. I forgot I defended it. A lot of your ideas work really well. So I took it for granted that this one also worked. I'm like, well, crap, I can't let that happen. <laughs> I can actually let it happen. It's totally fine. You spooked me. <laughs> yeah, so... Just take the bishop. And, yeah, I mean, the rook attacks a lot of stuff, but I survive it. I don't have a silver, do I? Oh, wait, I don't need to drop a silver. I can just move the silver defense this way and this way. Yeah. That's funny. So that fork hitting the gold and this vague concept isn't quite there. Yeah, you probably have something out here that collects something, and at this point I should maybe consider attacking. <laughs> maybe. Um, but yeah, my knight move was super dumb. It almost... Uh, it was dangerous. Um, yeah, so this could have been possible. I'm s I'm impressed. Just the three general castle just floating out here does everything to ward off my attacks. Um. Oh man, I should have a checkmate. It's not fair that I don't. <laughs> uh, what if I just say I'm gonna go for it? Say so, you know, okay, I don't need this. Is this does this work? I have a gold general in hand. That's pretty nice. Uh, wait, no, I could just place it here. I was looking a second ago that, wait, if they move the king up, I have this. 
Um, but okay, yeah, so taking, taking this gold walks into a mate. But yeah, you'd need to block this somehow. Um, yeah, I need to work on my checkmates. Yeah. If gold drop four one. Oh. Okay. So you're saying this feels useless if I just try to prevent this capture here. Whether I drop a gold or maybe I drop this or something like that. Um I mean yeah, my king escapes. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's the larger point, is that I should just run the king and then play out a checkmate whenever I see one. Yeah. That's a really good point. And since you have pawns on all six files, pawns over here can't do anything. You'd have to, like, join this attack here somewhere, but yeah. Um, so this bishop sack didn't really quite work out, unfortunately. Um, maybe this would have been... I mean, it's not an immediate sack and mate sort of thing, but I guess this might prepare this idea a bit more. Uh, even if it still might not work out. Uh, well, I guess here, yeah, you still run into similar issues, don't you? Um, like, not. I'm not saying that I should drop the gold here, but this was your concern. And the concern remains even in this line. So this is why you opted for something faster. Um, man, this is not easy for me to win. But the same concern echoes there. But I should not have moved this in the first place. Yeah. Uh, another idea? Is there another idea? Nah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's just, I'm surprised this attack stopped. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, it's a question of move order here. That the bishop drop is probably fine, but delaying it for one move might have made it stronger. Um, but then again, maybe I can stop the bishop drop altogether and commit one of my pieces down here somewhere. Um, all right, just move this back down. But then this hits... I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Who can say? Who can say? My horse shouldn't be here. My horse should be somewhere more useful. You found a good attack, but it wasn't... Uh, just the tactics, unfortunately, didn't support it. It's so close. It was so, so close. Um, yeah, this is clever. Bringing the gold up, uh, and then the sacrifice, and then the rook drop looked reasonable, and then this fork. Uh, so yeah, this is all good. Um, I mean, this makes me question my gold move, that maybe I should have done this instead. Uh... Unless there's a tactical shot that removes it. But yeah, this maybe have been safer, but um, instead we saw this, and I managed to defend my king, and you kept attacking the best way you have available to you, and I forced you to exchange your gold for my rook, and then you try to defend as you should, but it's rough. Ah, uh, if I dropped a bishop, I see. Oh, I see, if that bishop drop, yeah, that makes sense. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to drag out the game, but that makes sense. If I just drop the bishop confining all of your attack, I think that stops it. Um, but I wonder, even though I mentioned this, like, uh, I don't know. 
I just have an extreme tendency not to believe in attacks. So when an attack actually works, I'm quite impressed. Um, Bishop drop looks impressive, but I didn't really... Yeah. Hopefully you would have found this. Um, I'm not meaning to be contrarian. It's just Shogi's a really complex game. And there's a lot of ways to think about positions. Um, so my first idea here was this bishop drop, but I ruled it out. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I mentioned I didn't see this, and that's true. I didn't see this until after I played my move. Um, and after you did your silver fork. But yeah, I don't. in retrospect, I don't actually like the bishop drop, because this pawn drop seems to continue the attack. Um... Yeah, this fork looks spooky, but there's got to be something here. Um, and if I move my gold, then you just drop a silver in the middle, so that's no good either. Um, oh. What if I try something less greedy? Oh, but then you push this. Well, that doesn't work for me. Wait, did you have this during the game too? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I think we missed something. I think we missed something critical. Uh, both of us missed this. That's not good. At this point, I have to run. And yeah, I do escape to safety, and it's super unpleasant, because all my pieces are hanging. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, I have to drop something. Bishop drop is too heavy. Gold drop might be too heavy, but might be forced. Um, what have I done? How did I get here? I shouldn't have taken this. That's impressive just how messed up this position is. Um... Escaping the Rook. Why did I do that? Because I don't have a pawn to drop here. Um, so, during the game, running away was my first idea. And I saw this. And my reaction was, oh no, I gave him a pawn. Um, this is how I should have played this. And this shuts down the attack completely. Because uh, you're not going to take a pawn. But maybe taking the pawn is the only thing you can do here. I mean, I guess there's this rook drop. But like you pointed out, there's this problem with the rook drop where it just can't go anywhere. Um, but maybe that's fine. I don't know. Feels like there's there's still some potential here, but the rook drop might not be the right idea for right now. Pawn drop 7-3. Uh, yeah, 7-4. Um, yeah, I was starting to look at this. So... Man, I'd like to remove this gold. I don't have a good way to remove it, do I? Yeah, that's nice. Actually, yeah, this is exposing why I don't retreat the silver. The silver's purpose is to prevent that, and so now I just allowed it. So I can't do this retreat. Yeah, that pawn drop 7-4 is so strong. Um, so I just need to like add another defensive piece 
and not freak out over this attack. So all I need to do is just defend for one turn. Um, there. That works, right? Uh, yeah. That removes the attacker. I mean, I guess you could exchange it for the silver and then drop the silver here. There's nothing that perfectly shuts down the attack, because I don't have a pawn. The pawn would be a perfect defensive piece. I don't have one. Oh, man. Where's the solution here? Is the solution that my pawn dropped back here was stupid? That's probably the answer. Is that you found the perfect counter to my pawn drop. So I should not have dropped the pawn here. That's the answer. <laughs> I put myself in Fugire, and you punished me for it. Even when, like, you have basically nothing to attack with, you could still punish me. That's... that's impressive. Um... Yeah, so what I should be doing instead is just, like, something like this. Uh, but then you have something like that instead. So what do I do about this? Oh, I mean, my knight could temporarily defend stuff, but... Oh, man. It's such a mess. My pawn drop, I thought, was such a good idea. It's so complicated. This occurred to me, too. Maybe this is what I needed to do. Defend my king so it has a chance to run. Um, and, yeah, defending it... I mean, maybe bringing out the gold anyway. And I retreat again. Um... Ugh. My head hurts trying to look at this. Um, so bringing up the gold strengthens this castle. Oh wait, my castle split. How did that happen? Yeah, so I should have just run the king out here. Instead, I put myself in a situation where I had no pawns to drop, and you were able to get a continuous attack. Much to my surprise. Um, hmm. I briefly considered this during the game. This looks way too dangerous. I can't consider that. Um... Hmm. Oh, here we go. I now remember the rules of Shogi. So, uh, yeah, this brings an attack next to my king, but this promotes as it retreats. This gives me the strength I require. Okay. So this would have been another way to, about it. Um... So yeah, I think we finally found an answer to how I could have defended if I were committed to defending and trying to hold the fort here. Is that um, this bishop drop, working in cooperation with this horse and all these other pieces, can somehow just barely stop the attack. And the only other thing we haven't looked at is like this, but... Like you say, that's just dead. Uh, I mean, maybe there's this, but I think it's six one way, half dozen the other. Where, yeah, uh, my horse near my king is just such a nice attack, defensive piece. And my rook still covers the rank. 
And my horse covers the box. So it's very difficult for an attack to exist here. Um, I guess you still have some semblance of an attack with like more pieces, but at some point I get my turn to attack and it's quite convincing. Well, my rook's in the wrong space. It's not convincing. I want it to be convincing. It's just not. Um, my rook is very much not in an attacking spot. And your king is well defended, despite ha having picked a castle. <laughs> you picked the thing that says I'm going to transition into some other castle someday. Um, and yeah, I collected material. Um, but it's super hard for me to attack even now without giving some pieces. Yeah, this initiative just keeps burning. It's impressive. Part of the reason it's effective is because I burned a tempo on this knight move. If I just moved up the gold and were brought over the rook and attacked directly... I would have had something by now. Um, but yeah, I played a super slow attack because I didn't want to mess up my attack, and I got lucky on these tactics. Um, so this is a variation. Instead I played this and we got the sharp line, but um, we both missed this. And if this had happened, I'd have had to run the king and try to survive. And I think I would have survived that, but we'd have to play it to see it. Because I don't necessarily believe that I survived this. Not with so many pieces hanging. Yeah, this would have been painful. And point number two for other viewers. Like, this is the pin. This breaks the castle. That's why we'd have to do the other line. Um... So anyway, I survived this attack, and uh, at this point, yeah, you're doing the best you can here, but there's nothing to have anymore. Um, I guess we're in the end game. So to your question an hour ago, is it okay to run the king in the middle game? In the middle game, maybe. In the end game, there just isn't time. You have to buckle up, commit everything to the, to the attack, and pray that it works. Even though here clearly I can... it shouldn't work. But, like, there's no choice here. You have to attack. There's not time to defend anymore. Because I have just too much to attack with. I, At least that's my interpretation, is that, like, this king move is just super ill-timed. And that all my pieces enter with gain of time. Um, yeah, so then I was able to hit this way, and you're forced to take it, and then I drop this, and it's just... I'm impressed. Yeah, this rook drop was beautiful. Um, yeah, uh, what should I do here? My lance drop 2-1 I think is excellent. Maybe it should have gone on 2-2 two, two instead, but... Um, yeah, how do I continue? I considered knight takes. I don't think knight takes does it. Um, it would have been nice if knight takes mates, but I don't think it does. Because you block with a pawn. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. I have a pawn now. <laughs> uh, that would have been nice. Um... Hmm. Okay. How do I make this work? I don't know. Do not know. But getting that pawn so close by is encouraging. Yeah. Yeah, I could have sacked ev everything. As long... Like, this whole game I've been surviving your attack. And so now I wanted to starve out... Um, any chance of an attack while I was attacking. You're right, though. I could probably could have sacked everything to just win here directly somehow. 
Um, I wonder. I wonder. Uh, I'm trying to read out the mate. So if I drop here, drop, drop. Oh, shit. Really? Is this there the whole time? Yeah, okay. Sorry. I have just enough generals to do that. Oh, man. So I missed a mate in seven. Oops. Yeah, that's embarrassing. I... I didn't think this worked. Um, but no, it's just barely enough. You're absolutely right. Uh, so... Yeah, I missed that. Well, if, since that works, um, this pawn advance doesn't stop it. In fact, the pawn advance allows this to happen. And trying to stop my attack. Yeah, this is weird. So allowing the mate might not... It does prevent, like, horse takes pawn with a more obvious mate. Yeah. So in terms of a human thing to do, yeah, this pawn 2-5 is, I guess, the best way to refute the human's attack of this, 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 which is super direct. Uh, computer would never play pawn 2-5 because the computer sees the mate in 7. A uh, computer would probably play, I don't know, like this. But yeah, you stopped the, the direct mating idea. And I would have found this. And yeah, this is just indefensible at this point. Um, well, I say that. Yeah, you actually cannot drop here. So, computer found this... Uh, or this, maybe? I don't know. I'm trying to give the king somewhere to run to. Um, yeah, I guess in a desperate situation, or in a pinch, uh, something like this might have been appropriate. Um. It puts up some resistance, but it's hard for me to criticize. Because what you did actually confused the living daylights out of me, so... Uh, who am I to criticize at this point? Um. Yeah, I found this, and this, and yeah, you tried your best to defend this. Again, I could sack directly, and again, I missed it. Although this time, maybe it's not so obvious. Um, hmm, multiple sacrifice lines. Which one do we look at first? I want to solve this. Even though it doesn't matter, and you should really do real endgame puzzles instead of... No, actually what I did is totally reasonable. Um, but where's the freaking mate? During the game, I was trying to read this. Rook drop, gold takes. Uh, no, I don't have drop mates here. So that doesn't work. Um, yeah. Huh. This is an impressive defensive move. Just, uh, uh, oh yeah, I missed this. <laughs> totally missed the fork. Oh, man. That was... A moment. Oh man, so because I missed the mate earlier and you found this re escape resource, 
Yeah, I shouldn't be using this to attack. This is the wrong way to attack. My faster attack is this one. I should have done this. That's what I was looking for. So, yeah, this surrounds the king and mates. The lines are too deep for any of us to read, but... Yeah, this avoids all the fork nonsense, and I should be able to puncture this. The rook can't stay here forever. Or rather, if it does, like, then my horse just works its way back, and, you know, this time it's a horse and the king can't go there. This is the threat. Uh, so, like, yeah, I guess you could try running away, but then... Well, yeah, can I sack this? Yeah, I can set. Oh, gold drop. Oh, shoot. That's illegal. Sorry. So, yeah, this running away doesn't work, so there's this instead. But again, there's gold drop mate, which I completely spaced on here, because I'm like, hey, you take the piece, and... No, oh, but I have gold to drop. So, yeah. Yeah, this is a net that just keeps tightening. Um, I guess the best try here is take some more pieces to add to the castle. Or maybe that's better than the silver retreat. You just chomp this. I don't know. It's still a desperate situation, but I think your point back here, after pawn 2-5, your point that I should just sack and mate absolutely is correct. Yeah, this... So either the king retreats and gets mated instantly, or we see a variety of different checkmates take place. Um, yeah, so this is the easier one to understand. And then this... Yeah, this I definitely should have seen. After having missed that, uh, you put up a good defense. I forced you to drop a piece to block, and... My attack continues unabated, but or abated, but there's just no holding it. Yeah, at this point, it's just overwhelming. Actually, I'm sorry. I, during the game, I saw this mate. During post-game analysis, I freaked out for a second here about why is there a resignation? But no, there's mate next move. Um, so, what do we conclude? Uh, yeah, so the, I guess there are two parts to the conclusion, other than the general advice about, like, keeping a perfectly flexible thing just is really hard to do. That's not really constructive advice. I guess the two pieces of constructive advice I can think of, and maybe there are more, one would be we both completely whiffed on this. Uh, this would have taken the game into extra innings, as we say in the States. Where, yeah, there's a lot more to look at. Um, because I can't simply retreat and pick up the rook. Uh, during the game, what I'd expect was something like this. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, promotion, unpromotion, I don't remember. But something like this is what I'd expected. Um, or maybe it was this. I'm sorry, yeah, it was this, actually. Uh, King 6-2. Oh, I didn't take that. I didn't run away. Wait. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, this... During the game, I was thinking about this. And I freaked out. Um, this looked too spooky. Um, but no, it's probably just fine. This is way safer. Well, I'm sorry. The, the line where I get mated, that's a diff... Or the line where it's a really messy endgame. That's different. This here, I'm surviving even though you get a gold and a rook and can defend really well, and maybe it, 
Yeah, I guess the way I defended in the game was best, but this gold move is just... I guess we both trusted each other a lot. Um, so this is one point. There was the opening point we made that um, the silver moved up and up and up and down and up and down. And then I think it went down again. No, I'm sorry. But it spent six moves to work its way back to where it started, which is fine. Just understand that your attack is going to be a bit slower when you do that. So that, um, yeah, when you try things like Rook Over, uh, you have to double check them now. Um, because even if this ends up being the best move and containing my horse and all this stuff, I don't know, I found in recent weeks that trying to win material, I'm sorry, recent months really, trying to win material and surround the piece and capture the piece ends up being such a loss of time. You can win pieces. You can trap pieces and win them. But it's an, it takes a lot of time and effort. And you did manage to trap my horse. You succeeded in trapping it. Um, and I somewhat allowed you to succeed in this. And if I were really concerned about that, I would have kept my silver here and said, no, you can't trap it. Um, but I did succeed in trapping it. I messed up here. I should have prevented the promotion this way because this is cleaner and allows my rook faster access to your king. But yeah, you succeeded in trapping my horse, but it loses time. And in this case, since I got the lance, yeah, you played it, played a slow opening and then spent some more time winning a piece and yeah tried really hard to get your attack working after that but it was too late it finally became my turn to attack and you missed a critical point with this pawn move because we both trusted each other too much um found a lot of good resources but you just needed one more yeah your attack here just you attacked as well as you could but there just wasn't one to be had anymore um, yeah, you got me to give up my rook. I don't like giving up my rook, so when I'm giving it up, uh, you've done something right. But, yeah, at this point, you've spent too much time, and the attack was not profitable enough, so... Um, I guess the other point we can conclude is that, like, you allowed me to checkmate, but, um... You yeah, put up a really firm resistance, putting this rook into the castle. I considered taking it and then dropping the rook and trying to attack, but I'd need a bishop to support that, so I didn't have that, so I didn't do that. But at some point, maybe I could have taken this. But yeah, this pawn advance just allows a mate in seven, like you point out. Although, it's probably against a human, the best thing to do is just let the mate and hope I don't see it. Um... But against a computer, you'd have had to find something like this and letting the king run out. And maybe there would have been chances there, because this is hanging too. Um, so, sorry my analysis is all over the place. Sorry we started the game late, um, although I did get a warm-up in, so it was a good, exciting game to have. And yeah, well played overall. Best of luck with other teaching letter games. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it's good discussion. Um, sorry, I'm having to kind of guess the questions and the answers here. Sometime we'll have you direct the uh, review. Tr today I tried to direct it and I was all over the place, but I think it was still a good game and a good review. It was good fun. I hope we enjoyed that. Very nice. Uh, for the video, folks, how do I wrap this up? Um, so, yeah, uh, I got confused super early in the opening, um, but then as soon as this moved, uh, I was suddenly less confused and had some idea what was going on. Um, so there was some move order nonsense that we had to concern ourselves with. 
Yeah, I pushed my pawn because I didn't know what I was doing. I kind of wanted to use the bishop here, but anyway, so trying to summarize the game. Um, yeah, we both tried to keep a flexible defense and both tried to keep a flexible attack. Um, and I guess the way I gained a move is between this having spent six moves to get out there and back, and then this pawn having moved on the edge... I guess somehow between these four moves that got lost and these two moves invested in pushing a pawn that ultimately did it make contact? I don't remember. Let's take a look. Did this pawn ever make contact with my castle? I guess that was another point. Um, maybe if this had made contact, this... Well, this could have been super effective under the one line where I messed up. Um, so yeah, this line with this pawn advance. well, yeah, okay, this pawn extended an influence back here. So yeah, if the pawn had been back further, this attack would have been less severe. So this actually did sort of kind of make contact, but yeah, they spent four moves, uh, six to get the silver here, two to get this pawn up, another three to get this moving eventually, but I attacked very quickly. Um, hit the rook, hit a lot of their pieces. Never could quite hit their king, because it was always super well defended. But then eventually when I did hit, um, yeah, there was just no defending. So, uh, yeah, their attack had to succeed, and unfortunately didn't quite make it. So, hopefully that was exciting for everyone. Thanks for watching. See you next time.